Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of Acts. Uh, today we will cover the sixth chapter. Uh, this is a very interesting study about the trials and tribulations that Peter and John are uh, experiencing. Uh, this story takes place probably about five years after Pentecost, time had passed, and we pick up in the first verse. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained about uh, the Hebraic Jews because the wind widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. The, the Hebraic Jews were those born in Palestine or the surrounding areas. Uh, they spoke Aramaic or the particular dialect of their uh, area. Uh, the Grecian Jews were Jews that uh, were born in Greece. They spoke Greek or they would speak uh, languages uh, in that area. And as you can imagine, there were some uh, disagreement between the two of them. The Hebraic Jews were more traditional, as the term we would use, the, the uh, Hellenistic, uh, the Grecian Jews felt that they were more up-to-date, more modern. And it's interesting that this was going on in the early church, still goes on today. People differ, and so they break off and form another church. And in this case, the Hellenistic, the Grecian Jews, uh, felt that their widows were not uh, being taken care of to the extent that the uh, Hebraic Jews uh, were taken care of. This was nothing intentional. It was just uh, the way things happened at that time. And in verse 2, so the twelve, these were the uh, apostles, they, at that time, there was no organizational structure in the church, and they did everything. They took care of everything. And they gathered all the disciples together. It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. So, in, in the parallel today, the pastor can't do everything. He's got to have time to, to uh, study, to prepare, to share God's Word uh, when he addresses the congregation. The same thing was true here. The apostles felt that it was their primary responsibility to share the good news of Jesus of the coming Messiah, the, the one had come to provide salvation for the people of Israel and the people that believed in him. And, you know, we just really don't have the time to do the daily chores, as they described it, the work of waiting on tables. In order to wait on tables, uh, we can't do that. Brothers, choose seven men uh, from among you, and there were three qualifications. The first was they must be uh, well known uh, to the congregation. They must have been a part of the activities and uh, had done work in the church. They must, who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this over to them and will give them our attention to a prayer, to prayer and the ministry of the Word. So here is our, our primary responsibility to do ministry, to uh, pray, and to minister to people. It's going to be your job to give out uh, the daily distribution of food. Uh, Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. Uh, this was their calling as well, to be 
about prayer, to be about preparation. And so in verse 5, it says, this proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, a Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. So you see that the church bent over backwards because these are all Grecian names. These are all Greek-speaking. They were all part of the Greek church. And so the church uh, bent over backwards to treat everybody equitably. Of course, it's interesting, too, that Nicholas from Antioch, where the church was going to go, uh, and where Barnabas, that we've mentioned in the last couple of lessons, uh, ultimately would be the preacher there, the minister there. And Stephen was to be the first Christian martyr. And if you look over in the seventh chapter in the 54th verse, uh, when they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him, speaking of Stephen. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They covered their ears, they yelled at him, and of course, Stephen was stoned to death and martyred. Um, and then uh, they presented, it says, to uh, these men, to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. And uh, this was the method of, of uh, similar to, uh, but of course not in the same context, a scapegoat. Uh, receiving the burden and sent out. And here the laying on of hands was to bless and to convey uh, a ministry upon these, these uh, seven people that they picked. And so in verse 7 it says, Luke writes, So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. And one of the commentaries said that there could have been as many as 8,000 priests in that day. And, and uh, they, uh, the, the people that followed Jesus were not just shepherds or, or workers in the field, but they were uh, priests as well, and a large number of them uh, became uh, believers and followed Jesus. And now in verse 8, it said, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. He wasn't one of the original uh, apostles, but God had blessed him and had filled him. And we need a lot of Stephens in the church because they're the workers. They're the ones that get things done. In verse 9, opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen. Of the freedmen, as it was called, these were Jews and of Cyrene and Alexandria as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. So these were former slaves that had come to believe and follow Jesus, and, and they too formed a separate group. So now we have the Grecian Jews, we have the Hebraic Jews, and now also we have the freedmen that were also followers of Jesus. And these men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom. 
of the spirit by whom he spoke. So he was empowered and and uh, his words ignited the fire in the people that he spoke to and they believed and followed Jesus. But the freedmen spoke secretly and opposed uh, them and they persuaded uh, some men to say, a polite way to say they bribed some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So uh, spreading falsehoods, uh, he did not speak against Moses. He merely said that Moses proclaimed the law, but Jesus is the answer to the call for a Messiah. And verse 12, So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. Uh, they, as we talked about last week, they brought a division and and uh, divisiveness and and uh, separateness in the church. They brought this unity, and and God hates these things. So they stirred up the people, and the elders and the teachers of the law, the leaders in the church. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stops speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard and say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. A little bit of truth, a whole lot of deception. Uh, this uh, perhaps had to do more with speaking against animal sacrifice. And these were things that, that being a believer in Jesus uh, was all that was necessary for salvation. There was no need to follow the law in order to be a follower of Jesus as, as some Jews uh, tried to convince a people that were following Jesus. Yeah, we know that you believe in Jesus for salvation, but in addition to that, you must be circumcised and you must eat certain foods. And, and of course, the apostles said, no, that is not necessary. And this is what uh, these elders and leaders of the church were, were bringing up, is that, that Moses is speaking against these things. Well, he just said they weren't necessary, that, that it is by faith you are saved not by works, that you don't have to do all these things. If, if you believe in the name of Jesus, as was emphasized last week, you will be saved. And they twisted and turned and, and, and created concern for Stephen and for the apostles. And then in verse 15, all who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw his face was like the face of an angel, uh, like Jesus, although not exactly, but you remember when Jesus went up to Mount Hermon and he was transfigured and his face shone like the face of an angel, and here we see Stephen, uh, the power of God, the presence of God visible in his face, in his appearance. Uh, he was not quite, but he was transfigured or shown the presence of God. What a blessing 
to have men like Stephen that that did the groundwork, the hard work, that that brought uh, the barriers, that that brought the name of Jesus to the people of Israel, to the Grecian Jews, to the freedmen. There was no separation. He preached unity for all, for all to be of one heart and mind. Praise God, let us be of one heart and one mind as we proclaim the good news of Jesus. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you that Jesus came just when we needed it most. We thank you for the Stephens in the church and the Barnabases in the church that bring good news and cheer and hard work. Uh, we thank you for the multiplicity of church that have a common belief in Jesus. Uh, certainly there are differences in ceremony and in, in small differences, but Jesus is the name above all names the man who came to save us from our sins. Uh, Father, we pray for their, our leadership in our churches today. Uh, we pray, Father, for those that are anticipating surgery and pray that you would be with the doctors and nurses. We pray, Father, that, that you would be with those that teach in our church and, and lead us in our discipline. Uh, Father, be with us as we go out. Let us be those that, that carry the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, in the name of salvation. And all of these things we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God sure and said, Amen. God bless you.